Welcome to the Transform Your Wedding Podcast, a how-to guide for taking your wedding to a whole new level. Here's your host, Marie Kubin from Rent My Wedding. Hey everyone, today's episode is all about tablescapes. We'll be chatting with Keith Willard, an award-winning event planner and owner of Keith Willard Events. Keith has a long history in the events industry, starting with roles at the Ritz-Carlton and Hyatt Regency before starting his own company. So I can't wait to talk with Keith and hear all of his great advice about tablescapes. Hey Keith, well thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me on. This is, this is awesome. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, definitely. And now we're talking about tablescapes, which I think is one of those things that couples often just overlook completely, but it's really an important part of the reception decor. Well, and, you know, and that's the thing is that, uh, you know, nothing stay, makes a room visibly beautiful, more like a tablescape. I mean, that is literally going to be the very first thing that people see when they walk into any uh, celebration, specifically a wedding, you know, and so to make sure that your tables are visibly beautiful and that have your taste is, is incredibly important. I, I, I don't think that actually outside of food and maybe entertainment, I feel like these are a top three. It's a top three piece. Definitely. Yeah, I can agree more. Now, for those couples who are just starting out, can you kind of break it down and explain what exactly do we mean when we say tablescape? So, and that is one of those things that a lot of people are like, it's, it feels like kind of like a generality. And it is, honestly, a tablescape is kind of a generality, meaning that anything that is on top of your table is considered a tablescape. And that includes your florals, your napkins, your linen, even your silverware and plateware, glassware, all of those things are brought in in order to create just the right tablescape for your event. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, when it comes to all those different elements you're talking about, you know, if couples are on a budget and they've got to pick and choose, is there anything you'd say is like a definite must have when it comes to that tablescape? You know, I, I feel like beautiful flowers are always, uh, always appropriate. Uh, and I think that you, you need to have a little education about what flowers cost before you start meeting with a florist, because there are lots of opportunities there. I mean, flower, a centerpiece can go anywhere from 50 bucks to let's say $300 or $400. Now, Obviously, on the upper range, that's not typical. That's not usual. Most people tend to be on the lower end of the scale. And knowing what flowers cost will help you go a long way in creating the perfect centerpiece for your table. I would also think about linen. I feel like um, white linen is obviously appropriate for baby showers, bridal showers, brunches, those kind of things. But when you're talking about a dinner environment, Think of the table like a canvas and the more space that you have on the canvas means the more colors you have to then put into it. And so having a linen that is, let's say a little above your, your typical hotel house is going to take you a long way as far as overall decor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes sense, especially that's what's really going to pop out in the room when you walk in, you're just going to see those linens. So I think I totally agree. That's such an important part and a must have when it comes yeah. to the tablescape. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the things that you can kind of say, well, maybe we don't need to do this. I know some couples wonder, do you really need favors or you know, what uh, things on the table can you get away without doing? I am not a fan of favors. Never have been, never will be. I feel like favors are kind of a wasted portion of your budget, especially when you're talking about, you know, trying to get as, mo as much as possible out of every dollar, you know, and, and think about the last couple of weddings that you've gone to and how many favors were left behind. I mean, honestly, how many wine stoppers can any of us actually keep, right? So, <laughs> It, it, it's so true. And so that's the crazy part is that you have to pay attention to, does this have an emotional impact? Is this going to add to the overall memory of the event? And on average, I'm going to tell you it, it's a no, because again, who wants to keep that, you know, wine stopper for two years and then you donate it. And exactly. yeah. I don't know too many people that want that as a donation, but there you go. 
<laughs> yeah, then, I'm be there, especially if it's personalized. I mean, I understand the couples love to have their monogram everywhere, but yes. you know, think about your guests. Do they want your monogram at their house? I mean, they're probably not going to keep that, you know? A hundred percent. And that goes for champagne classes that have a date name of the couple. You know, if you give somebody a single champagne glass, it's, Oh, how sad is that? That they only get to drink champagne by themselves, first of all. So, you know, and, and second of all, it's going to go in a curio cabinet. It's going to be there for two years and then it's going to go away. And so it's, it's basically wasted money. If you're going to spend that kind of money, put that towards a different part of your tablescape because it's going to have a bigger emotional impact at the end of the day. Because what we're really trying to do is build memories, build those positive memories, because your event is not just based on your perception. It's based on all of your guests' perceptions as well. And so the more that, that you do to make sure that they're having a great time and that they are feeling comfortable and joyous, the more you're going to actually enjoy your wedding in the long run. Definitely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. And when it comes to designing the tablescape, you know, there's a lot of elements like you're talking about the linens and the colors and there's flowers and, mm -hmm. you know, it seems like a lot to pull together. So how do couples kind of approach that when it comes to coordinating everything so that it works together? So I mentioned earlier about the canvas and I feel like when you look at a table, it is a blank canvas and you are the artist and your colors are the materials that are going to go on the table. So think of plateware, linen, I mean, um, napkins, silverware, centerpieces, all those little things are different colors that you're going to be using to paint your canvas. And so that's how you first start. It's like, what is my base canvas going to be? And we go back to the linen choice, right? So originally we had talked about the white linen doing something different. So use a color of your wedding that you really, really love. That's not too bold because as with all canvases, it needs to be kind of a neutral background, right? In general. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're, let's say your colors are seafoam green and well, let's see, what is the Pantone colors? Oh, let's go with gray and, and um, yellow because those are the Pantone colors for 2021, mm -hmm. um, which are interesting choices by the way. So not kind of my favorite colors, but anyway. So mm -hmm. if you're gonna do, let's say with Pantone colors and you have a gray, a gray and yellow uh, color palette for your event. Then I would do a light gray or a really light yellow as the linen and then start building from there, right? Because then you know that you're gonna at least have plateware, napkins, silverware. So do that, put those on the table. What do you see? What needs to be filled in? And then just do it step by step. Don't try to take on the whole project overall because as with weddings, it can get overwhelming and it's better to build it little by little until you have your finished product. But don't stress yourself out because remember that you may be only looking at one item or let's say for a typical table, 10 items on a table. It's gonna be multiplied by multiple tables and multiple people. So what could be just a one-off, let's say a charger, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a charger and it's, let's say a glass charger, Beautiful, glass is always appropriate, just saying. Um, if you put glass chargers, then you, if you have 10 of them, 10 of them seems all right, but you multiply that by 10 tables, all of a sudden you have 100 chargers and that becomes a major part of your decor. So give yourself a little bit of a break. And I remember that it's gonna be multiplied by ton, as many people as you have at the wedding. Yeah, I think that's great advice, kind of breaking it down and just take it piece by piece, because that's always, you know, what I find is if you're looking at the whole big picture from the start, it's so overwhelming. So I love really that idea just, you know, start with the linens, go from there one by one. I think that's a great way to do it. Well, and also keep in mind that it's not the dollars that are going to get you when you're talking about budgets, because the big ticket items, everybody understands, they budget for. It's going to be the small stuff that gets you. It's going to mm -hmm. be the really individual, unique place cards that you just can't do without that you found on Etsy. Or it's going to be that really specific salt and pepper shaker that you feel like, you know, every table needs, you know, three pairs of them. You know, when you're talking about a dollar a piece, Okay, great. It is a dollar a piece when you're talking about one, but then if you multiply it on average, most weddings typically are run about 100, 150 people. Multiply that cost by 100 or 150. And again, all of a sudden it becomes a big part of your budget. Mm -hmm. And is it really needed? Hmm. That's really, that's 
you know, that's why you want to do a design ahead of time. Yeah, definitely. Now, what do you think about, you know, doing different tablescapes for different tables in the same room? So let's say, you know, maybe you want to go all out with one table, but scale it down for the others. What's your thought on kind of mixing and matching? Well, and it, if you're going to mix and match, it's going to have to be the entire event. I mean, you can't have a one-off table where one table is mix and match. If you're going to mix and match, you got to do it for everything. I have a wedding that we're doing actually a, a variety of chairs. And one of the things that we had to really look at is to make sure that the chairs all had sat at the same level because some chairs are going to be slightly higher and some chairs are going to be slightly lower. So even though the back of the chairs and the chair itself are going to be different, we needed to make sure that the people were going to be sitting at the same level all the way around. Now, is that something you would normally, right? Is that something you would normally think of? Probably not, but it's an important component of, of the event and something that you got to think about. So yeah, I, I love mixing and matching. I feel, but again, if you're going to do it for one table, you got to do it from, for all of them. Mm -hmm, definitely. One seems like a mistake. Everything seems like a purpose. There you go. Yeah, I love that. Being purposeful and thoughtful about it, then it's going to all look intentional and come together. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk themes. How do you feel about, you know, going crazy with themes when it comes to the tablescape? I think themes are a way for people to get that creative juice flowing. I don't think that themes are going to be the thing that keep you going, but I really feel like it's going to be the thing that tickles that imagination and gets you moving in the right direction. Um, themes for baby showers, bridal showers. Absolutely. hundred percent. When it comes to weddings, you know, I, I think that when most people think theme, they've got kind of a, an idea of a cartoon or a Disney-esque kind of idea, you know, and, and some people don't realize that a theme could be just a color palette, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you think about traditionally what people think of as far as a theme, uh, you know, I, I'm not that, I'm not a Disney-esque kind of planner, but I do love a good color palette to follow while, while designing. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Yeah, and you know, what I think about too is a theme that you might love when you're getting married might be completely different than down the road when you're looking at wedding photos, you might go, oh my gosh, in my 20s, why did I think that was so cool? And now you've got all these photos and it's just too much. So yeah. No, it is, gonna... it absolutely is. <laughs> yeah, so I do really like the idea of, you know, maybe when it comes to theme, thinking about colors as your theme and keeping it kind of timeless and classic is always a good way to go. 100%. So what else should couples think about when it comes to designing the tablescape? Um, you, you need to think about space. I think that, uh, especially in today's world, knowing how much space that you have is ultimately important. You know, before it was fine if you wanted to squeeze people in on a, a 60 inch or a 72 inch. You know, uh, they, they typically state that, you know, you can have up to 12 ta uh, chairs on a 72 inch. So if you squeezed 11 people in, you felt fine. I don't feel like that's appropriate anymore. And I think that, you know, now that we've got more ability to spread people, spread people out, I feel like that's going to be kind of a trend that continues to move forward. So I feel like personal space is something that people really need to think about when it comes to planning their wedding. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. I think especially this year moving forward, you're exactly right. We've got to be planning that seating capacity into the whole design for the tables, which might mean more tables and, you know, planning that into your overall budget again, so that you're not getting surprised at the end. And um, it all comes down to just, I think the best planning and making sure that you start out getting it all figured out ahead of time so that you're yes. not at the end getting stressed out and have a huge nightmare on your hands. Well, and I'm, you know, when, when I talk about space, I'm a big fan of All Seated. I don't know if you, it, you know, oh, yeah. a lot of people out there may not know about All Seated, but allseated.com is, is a free software program that anybody can use, anybody can sign up for. And a lot of the hotels and venues already have their floor plans already pre uh, preloaded into the program. So you can look them up and then actually see what it's going to actually look like in your diagrams because it is to scale and the nice thing about all seated is that you can hit a button and all of a sudden you're in a 3d uh, room so you can actually virtually see your space and how much room is actually between chairs and then it'll go a long way into helping making sure that you have a successful event 
Definitely. Yeah. I love all seated. And I think it's so awesome that they have that 3D effect because, you know, usually we're just looking at a floor plan and it's so hard to really get a good understanding, you know, when you're just looking at little drawings of what's that going to be like in real yeah. life. So yeah, all seated is amazing. And I think definitely everyone should check it out. You know, even if your venue isn't on there, contact them, they might add it, or if not, at least play around with it in a similar sized venue and you can get a really good idea. Well, it does have the ability for you to do uh, your a personal drawing. So you can go in and build the, the space. You know, if you know the dimensions of your ballroom, it does have that ability to allow you to at least put the general uh, guidelines in there. Um, but if you're a venue and you haven't been uploaded to All Seated, it's super easy. All you have to do is, is email them a PDF and they do all the work for you. It's kind of incredible. Awesome. Yeah, that's such a great tip. So any other kind of general advice or tips you want to give our couples before we wrap up? Well, I think that when you're, you're thinking about your wedding overall, you know, it's really important to have your personal touch on it because it is your wedding. So it, I feel like you need to at least include something a little corny. And I know that sounds random, but what endears us to other people is not perfection, it's the imperfections. And so finding something that is really truly yours and including it in the wedding will add that personal touch and allow you 10 years, 20 years down the road to look at photos and go, oh my God, remember that? That was awesome. Didn't you, didn't you love that? Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, a couple of my, uh, a couple of couple years ago, God, must have been, 10 years ago, but it's obviously stuck in my mind. They met at the movie Up. I don't know if anybody knows that out there, but Pixar had a, a really amazing cartoon called Up. And it was a feat, one of their first feature films and it won all sorts of awards. But in the movie, there was a scene where a young couple are sharing a bottle of grape soda, right? Well, this couple happened to really love that scene because then at the end, it shows the same couple, much older, sharing the grape soda. And Aww. so at each place setting, we actually did a card with a, a, a cap, a grape soda cap, with a little note that says, you know, I hope that we, you, when you see this, it reminds you of the love that we have for you and the love that we have for each other. And I just thought it was such a cute little and unusual that was the cool thing about it yes. it's not something you would have typically thought about for your tablescape but it was something i still have it actually i wish i'd brought it up but i actually have it because i just love the the emotion behind that and keep in mind that your tables are an emotional piece they need to represent who you are but it doesn't mean that you have to spend a lot of money you know a higher budget does not mean a better wedding it just doesn't and I think that's a massive mistake that a lot of people make that, you know, having a $400 linen, yay, may be great for some people, but it's not needed. You can get just as much of, from a, a smaller, less expensive, more budget-friendly linen than you can from an expensive linen. And, and also do your research. Make sure that you understand what the costs are because many times you'll walk into a showroom like Over the Top, and I love Over the Top, you know, and their showroom is in Incredible. You walk in and you're surrounded by literally hundreds of gorgeous linen, but you need to know what they cost first to make mm -hmm. sure that it fits in your budget and then choose the one that fits in your budget that you feel best represents you. But don't, don't overspend. The worst thing you can possibly do when it comes to tablescapes and, and basically anything with a wedding is to overspend. Don't put it on your credit card at 22%. Oh my God, you will be kicking yourself from here to no end. You yeah, know, mm -hmm. right? I mean, a great wedding is a wedding that stays in budget. And so however you need to do that, there's gonna be creative ways to make sure that your tablescape is perfect and represents you. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. You're exactly right. You can make something beautiful on any budget and there's nothing worse than overspending and regretting it later and getting in a whole world of debt as you're trying to start out your new life. So I think that's amazing advice. So, and I have uh, one other thing. I don't know uh, when this is going to be running, but I'm also planning a wedding showcase that is going to be sponsored by the Fort Lauderdale Beach Conventions and Services Bureau. And so it's called Love is in the Air. It's going to be February 14th. We would love to have rent my wedding as part of it. 
just FYI, you know, uh, and it's going to be, we're taking it, we're putting it on the top floor of a parking garage that has been converted to event space because now there's 64,000 square feet in the open air. And so we're going to be doing a large scale elopement. So we'll actually be doing ceremonies on site for anybody that wants one. And that's going to be February 14th. And it's going to start with a love of friendship from 12 to two, uh, elopement from two to four and then vow renewals for anybody that wants to renew their vows from four to six and so again love to have you love to have anybody listening it's going to be an awesome experience yeah that sounds really amazing we'll be sure to put a link to that over on our website as well thank you so well great well keith can you tell us more about you and your company So I started my company four years ago. I used to be the director of catering for Hyatt Regency Pier 66. And then I went on to um, open a hotel called The One and then was hired as the director of catering for Ritz Carlton and Bell Harbor. And so I understood the hotel side of it very well. And years Mm -hmm. ago when I was in Texas, I I had an event company, but honestly I needed the maturity and time and experience to really do my job well. And so I worked my way up through the hotels. And then about four years ago, I had, after being asked over and over and over by clients, if I could, you know, go with them to their next event. And of course, obviously, if you're working for a hotel, you're, you know, you have to be focused on the hotel, not on your own business. And so I decided to take the leap four years ago and, and start my company. And I really wanted to do everything I could to help as many people as possible. And, and so at the beginning, I would just do lots of conversations with lots of people, lots, like even, even if somebody couldn't afford me, I would spend hours on the phone with them talking about all the different possibilities that they should look into in order to create the best wedding possible. Obviously now I can't do that as much because unfortunately, but that's actually why I started um, the podcast Behind the Veil because I wanted still to have an outlet to be able to educate people um, again, even those that I didn't fit into their budget, because I think that love is, is ultimately the most important thing that we have in this world. It just is. And whatever I can do to help people, I'm going to do. And so the foundation of my business is based on that, that our, my job and my staff's job is to not do my best event, but to pull out their best event. What, what, what represents them best and how do we do that? while always paying attention to the budget. Because again, I, I feel like budgets are the, the ultimate uh, responsibility. It's the ultimate litmus test. It's the ultimate everything as far as, as your joy. If, if you overspend, you're not gonna be happy about your wedding. You know, uh, I, I think that, um, I think Keith Willard Events is about service. You know, I'm always available to my clients, always. And I think, you know, and it's so funny. I was talking to uh, Lori Hartwell with um, the Bridal Society and she is, um, a, and she does a program for certified wedding planners. That's, that's her whole existence is to help uh, wedding planners educate themselves. Mm-hmm. And, and, and part of the class is stating, you know, have specific office hours from, you know, whatever your office hours are, eight to five, nine to six, whatever they are, but have specific office hours. And I just can't do that. I, I feel no. like you know, I, I can't, it's horrible. It's horrible. Uh, but I feel like having access to a planner, it's not the question that stresses people out. It's the waiting for the answer that stresses so true. people out. It can be the simplest question ever, but if you have to wait a week or a day or even six hours, all of a sudden that really small little tiny question becomes its own big, horrible thing. And so having mm-hmm. access to me is a big, a big part of what I do. I, I want to be available and I want to be able to share the joy. Uh, my big, big tagline is I, I want to bring the joy back into planning. A lot of times when that. people get to my, to me, they have been trying to build their own wedding and are overwhelmed, stressed out, mm-hmm. completely caught off guard by everything that they're encountering. And so my job is to hopefully reduce all that stress, take it away, put everything in a linear fashion that they can understand, break it down into small bites so that way they can really enjoy the meal. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's great. And I just love that you're all about being accessible. I think that's one of the most important things for a planner because yeah. 
you know, couples, when they have a question, they want the answer now. So I think that's so huge that that's one of the key things you focus on. Well, and I really feel like, you know, everybody deserves a, their perfect day. They just do. I mean, the, there are so many opportunities here in South Florida. Like there's so many different venues that are available on all, all budgets. All budgets have an ability to have a perfect day, regardless of where your, your price point is. You know, the decisions that you make obviously are gonna affect the budgets. But, you know, I try to be as straightforward as possible. I don't sugarcoat things. I, I can consider myself a practical planner because I'm all about the logistics, because mm -hmm. I feel like great logistics will, will make a great wedding. Uh, and also I wanna make sure that people are basing their decisions in reality and not based on, oh, wouldn't that be great? You know, I've always said that couples should watch out for what ifing themselves to death. You know, oh, what if we did this? What if, don't do that. Your wedding is your wedding. Make the choices that will ultimately benefit you as far as finding joy in your event, but also protecting your pocketbook. I know it said budget like a million times. <laughs> Sorry. I love budgets and sticking to budgets. So you are speaking to me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Well, and you know, and the thing is, is that I have clients that range in from, you know, fairly large budgets to fairly tight budgets. And again, my job is to make sure that each of them has the wedding of their dreams, regardless. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm well, sorry about that. Thank you so much. Um, last thing, why don't you tell yeah. us how to get in touch with you? So there's a couple of different ways. You can reach me on my website, which is www.keithwillardevents.com. Or you can find me on Instagram at Keith Willard. That's K-E-I-T-H-W-I-L-L-A-R-D. Um, or you can find us on YouTube at Behind the Veil. So it's Behind the Veil Show or Keith Willard. I have a YouTube channel called Keith Willard. Um, and then every Tuesday at 2, live on Facebook, we do a, a different show called Behind the Veil. And every week we have a different guest um, to talk about weddings and all things weddings. So we've covered everything from mental health and wellness during COVID while planning your wedding to even estate planning for unfortunately people that, you know, want to protect themselves because they had to push off their wedding. Cause there's a whole different rule of laws that happen uh, when you've had to push off. Yeah. But yeah, so they, so they can reach me through my website. They can reach me through YouTube at, you know, at Keith Willard. Um, Instagram at Keith Willard, Twitter at Keith Willard, LinkedIn. I think it's Keith Willard one random. Um, and so, uh, yeah, please reach out. Like, even if you just need some, some advice, some direction, I'm, I'm always happy to answer a question always. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. This was really helpful. I loved everything you had to share about Tablescape. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. And, and again, thank you again for inviting me on the program. It was a real honor. Absolutely. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode all about tablescapes. Now, don't forget, you can catch all of our podcast episodes over at transformyourwedding.com. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time. This podcast is brought to you by Rent My Wedding, your one-stop shop for event rentals. Order online and rentals are delivered right to your door. Shipping is free both ways nationwide. Rent lighting, backdrops, photo booths, and more. With the most five-star reviews in the industry, Rent My Wedding makes rentals easy and affordable. Book your rentals today at www.rentmywedding.com.